All right, so let's nip this topic in the bud now, shall we? This is indeed something that I came across on my Twitter timeline, and it was something that I saw a lot of Montreal Canadiens fans picking apart in different directions, because the article we're talking about here is an article from TVA Sports. The title here is Six Powerful Forwards for the Canadians, and what this article pretty much is, is six different suggestions of forwards that the Montreal Canadiens could go after. Now, why exactly is this a big deal? Well, it's because Marc Bergevin did indeed admit it in an interview with Jean-Charles Lajoie last Tuesday. He said that he is constantly scanning the market for a big player who can contribute to offense. It's a situation that I watch daily. So with that idea in mind that the Canadians are indeed a team that is on the market looking for a forward, as per Mark Bergevin's own words, this article exists on TVA Sports to make six different suggestions as to who Bergevin could have his eyes on. Let's go through each of these suggestions because I know these names have sparked up a little bit of a discussion for each of them on Twitter. And of course, link in the description to the article itself, albeit it is indeed in French, so I had to translate this via the Google machine, but let's take a look at each of the six forwards that are suggested could be Montreal Canadiens targets. First up, it is Brandon Saad, a guy who is in a weird spot with the Chicago Blackhawks. The article opens up talking about how Mark Bergevin apparently really likes him and in fact was going to make a trade offer for him in 2015 before he was traded to the Columbus Blue Jackets. But Saad's in a weird spot because he's making $6 million next season on a team like the Blackhawks that is kind of strapped for cap. And I say that because they're a team that does need to re-sign some pretty important RFAs. Dylan Strom is one of the more recognizable ones, alongside of the guy who was the third runner-up for the Calder Trophy in Dominic Kubelik. Not to mention Drake Kajula, not to mention Corey Crawford, and you have yourselves this cocktail of what would be a very difficult situation to manage. This is why Brandon Saad has been in that position where people are talking about whether or not he could be traded. Six million dollars certainly is not cheap, and for a guy who is indeed 27 years old and who only potted 33 points this past season, there could be some value in moving this kind of player, especially for a Blackhawks team that many people are saying isn't even really fit to being a contender anymore. So the idea here is that Brandon Saad gets traded to Montreal, for what, we don't know, it's just listing the name of the player here, and he eventually would become another one of the guys to probably replace Domi Spot in the lineup as a winger. In fact, actually, you could apply that criteria to any one of the guys that we're talking about here today, because we're only really talking about wingers, so I guess you could cut and paste the same kind of formula for each of these guys. Second up on the list, though, is Detroit Red Wings winger Anthony Mantha. And before we get underway with this, Mantha is an RFA. It's not going to happen. Detroit has the cap space to match anything that a team would want to offer sheet Mantha. And furthermore, he was probably one of the best, if not the absolute best, Red Wings players on a team that was last in the league and the worst team we have ever seen in the salary cap era. This article over here on TVA Sports cites the reason as to why Mantha could even be on the move being a potentially toxic relationship with Jeff Blaschel, and that, honestly, I don't really think it's true, and because of that, I really don't believe that anything like this is even close to happening, so let's go over onto the next name, Josh Anderson, another RFA, this time from the Columbus Blue Jackets, a guy who scored 27 goals in the 2018-19 season, but who only scored one goal this previous season. He's big, he's a winger, he's 26 years old, he's gonna be an RFA, so he's gonna need quite a hefty pay raise. However, he is indeed a guy who did not play all too much this past season, only playing 26 games, he had 4 points, he wasn't really the healthiest throughout 2019-20, so there is a question mark as to what he is going to be able to provide in the long term future. However, because he's a big and fast guy who, citing the article here, is as strong as an ox, this would be a very good complementary piece to offset how small the Canadiens really are. Gallagher, Suzuki, Caulfield soon to be, all these guys are small guys, and hey, Josh Anderson, big 6'3 power forward right winger could be a very good contrast. 
The next guy on this list is Carolina Hurricanes winger Nino Niederreiter, who at a time was a very highly touted young NHL player, but today is a 25-year-old guy who just got played down in the lineup. I think everybody kind of knows Nino Niederreiter, right? He was a Minnesota Wild guy, he was an Islanders guy, but today he is getting paid $5.25 million until 2022. He is 28 years old, and he ended up not really being as good with the Hurricanes this time around than he was when he initially joined them after the Victor Rask trade last year. His point production was down, and in fact, he got overtaken by Ryan Dezingle in the lineup. So this article here proposes that because he indeed is a guy who was playing on the fourth line, why not see if he is an available asset in a trade? Give him a better role in Montreal, see if he can take that 20 goal scoring potential over into Quebec and allow him to actually play hockey in a role that he is actually going to be used. Speaking of Minnesota Wild guys, though, the next guy in this article is Jordan Greenway, a big 6'6", 227-pound right-wing, left-wing player. He's 23 years old, drafted out of 2015's NHL entry draft. And like many of the guys we've talked about already, he is also in need of a contract. He is an RFA, and he's coming off of a season where he had 28 points in 67 games played. Unlike a lot of the other guys, where their better seasons were kind of behind them, and they're seemingly not really in a position where they can progress upwards, quote-unquote. Jordan Greenway is kind of the opposite of that. He's been getting better, and he is in a position where the Wild may have a little bit of difficulty actually living up to what it is he may ask for. They're a team that has about $11.9 million in cap space and not too many players to re-sign, so it definitely can be done, but for the sake of making a trade because, hey, the Wild make some pretty bad trades when it comes to their forward core, why the heck not at least consider this idea? Quite like the Josh Anderson thing, this would be a really interesting pairing, having a guy like this alongside a Gallagher and Suzuki on the line. It's kind of like a Jack and the Beanstalk kind of thing, where you got one giant and all these other small guys around him doing their thing. Now, I know the imagery is kind of weird, I get that, but still, it's a very interesting idea to bring up for sure. I don't really know how willing Minnesota would actually be to part with a guy like Jordan Greenway, though, but indeed, the article talks about how the Wild are known for big, slow, heavy gameplay, so maybe acquiring a speedy guy from the Habs would be a nice change of pace, but of course, it's just a suggestion. And finally, the last player on this list in this article is none other than the man who we've already made so many videos about, Jesse Pogliarvi of the Edmonton Oilers. <sighs> if you want to talk about Pogliarvi... We've made several videos about Jesse Pogliarvi. Long story short, he is a top prospect from the 2016 NHL draft. He never really worked out. He was rushed to the NHL, and he was in a position where the way he was being deployed and the way his development went, it was pretty unsatisfactory for everybody involved. So after a while, after being sent down to the AHL, Jesse Pugliarvi eventually started doing really well, and he was one of the best, if not the absolute best player, playing pro hockey in Finland. And as a guy who is still in that U24 age range, there certainly is a lot of debate as to whether or not this kind of guy could be valuable going into the long-term future of the National Hockey League. So, with the Oilers in a position where he already requested a trade a while ago, but now he's being a little bit fickle as to whether or not he's actually going to come back, we don't know if he's going to come back, if that's going to happen anytime soon even, does it make sense for a team like Montreal, who could use some help on the wing, to trade for this guy? Add on to all the other fantastic fins that the Canadians already have, and play this guy in a middle six role. Obviously, it's all up for debate because it's just being mentioned here in an article, but I wanted to bring this idea up here on the channel to gather what you would think in the comments. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about each of these six players that the Montreal Canadiens could potentially go for, but of course, they're just suggestions. The Blackhawks' Brandon Saad, the Red Wings' Anthony Mantha, the Blue Jackets' Josh Anderson, the Hurricanes' Nino Niederreiter, the Wilds' Jordan Greenway, and the Oilers' Pauli Yarvi. Tell me in the comments what you think about this whole idea. Obviously, not only discuss us the actual players themselves, but what exactly you would be willing to give up in a trade? Because obviously, depending on who you ask, there's going to be different variables and different levels of value as to what could go back the other way. So talk to me in the comments about all that stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, though, link in the description to this article if you want to read what indeed is mentioned on the take here on TVA. Social Social.Nine9, and bye. <laughs>